just remembering that you are energy. You're an energy being. You're a spirit. You're also physical, and everything physical has an energetic blueprint. So what we're doing is we're shifting the energetics so that the physical experience can change. Hey, hey, Dr. Brandy here. And one of my favorite things to do is to help women truly enjoy their bodies, to feel healthier, to turn back the aging clock from the inside out, to enhance their energy throughout the day, and to help them feel sexier no matter what age they're in. This is all accomplished through a process that we take together, but we, we, we begin with a personalized health assessment that identifies your toxicities and your deficiencies and the spiritual and emotional blocks that may be getting in your way of you living your own life on fire. And what I've found is that there's always room for optimizing your life, regardless if you're a career woman at the top of your game, a mom who has kids leaving the nest, or an athlete that feels that he's at peak performance. There is always room for optimization. And... If you're interested in learning how to optimize your own life and would like to see if you're a good fit to work with me one-on-one, there are a few spots that I've opened up and I wanted to make this available to my listeners of the Turn Your Soul on Radio community first. So if you'd like to apply, head on over to my website, drbrandyvictory.com forward slash activate. That's A-C-T-I-V-A-T-E, drbrandyvictory.com forward slash activate, and that's Brandy with a Y, (laughs) and uh, fill out the form. You'll be given an opportunity to connect with me, and we can have a deeper conversation to see if it's a good fit. So thank you so much for being a part of the Turn Your Soul on Radio community, and I looked forward to the potential of going forward on your wellness journey with you. You are listening to Turn Your Soul on Radio. I am your host and visionary doctor, Dr. Brandy Victory, and my mission is to assist high-achieving women in closing the gap between feeling unfulfilled to living a life on fire. It is time, ladies, to champion our own lives and turn ourselves on. This is Living Victoriously, ladies. This is how you turn your soul on. Hello, you energy powerhouses. We are back. And we are going to start clearing out your first chakra, your first energy center that is the foundational root at the base of your spine. And uh, yeah, we're going to we're going to have a little fun with this today. But before we get started, I just want to thank our sponsor, Purium Superfoods. That's um, the sponsor of the 10 Day Transformation Program. But they also have, since we're talking about the first chakra today, and its color is red, and some of the foods that you're going to be eating to support your first chakra are red foods. Uh, I wanted to uh, share with you the bio fruit product that Perium has. It's actually this really beautiful um, powder that you mix in. That's just this an impressive array of nutrient dense organic fruits to support your body. And you can add it to smoothies or you can just add it to water and drink it. Sometimes I just do that. Um, there's no sweet in it, but it is fruit. So, you know, um, it has everything from cranberry extract. It's all organic. It's organic cranberry, apple, pomegranate, pineapple, and mango, and blackberry, and blueberry, and acai, acai, excuse me, <laughs> black currants, so much more strawberry, raspberry. So you're basically getting a whole bunch of red fruits in there and a few other things, of course. Pineapple's not red. (laughs) But um, yeah, really, really nice to support your first chakra, to support your detoxification pathways. And if you're like not feeling like you're absorbing your nutrients, then this would be a really great way because it's highly bioavailable. So you're going to get that right into your cells on a cellular level. So um, there you go, Purium Superfoods. If you'd like to try it out, you can go to ishoppurium.com, ishoppurium.com, I-S-H-O-P-P-U-R-I-U-M.com, and uh, look up BioFruit. You'll love it. And then uh, if you want to get a free canister, maybe two, I can't remember how much it is, but um, you could do that by using my $50 gift card that I offer my listeners. So if you want to use that gift card, you can get a free container there. And that gift card code is Dr. Brandy. That's D-R-B-R-A-N-D-Y. So go on over to ishoppurium.com and check out BioFruit and enjoy your free container. All right, on with the show. 
All right. So as you know, there, we're just um, going to do a series of chakra clearing exercises. So you'll probably, then, I imagine, I'm not sure how this is going to unfold, but I imagine the next seven, maybe eight episodes will be working on these chakra systems of your body. And I just want to um, be real clear that it's not important to get too hung up on location and, and all this, you know, stuff, the minutia. Um, I'm just want you to have the exercises and the ways that you can support and balance your own system. And, you know, some people are going to tell you the second chakra is at the navel. Some people will tell you second chakra is below the navel. It doesn't really matter. Honestly, it doesn't really matter. Don't get hung up on that stuff. Um, just what matters is your intention, right? And if you're visualizing it in your body and it's below the navel, great. Maybe that's where yours is at. If you're visualizing it in your body and it's at the navel, great. Maybe that's where yours is at, right? Who says it has to be in the same place for every single person? So, um, yeah, there we go. And uh, and just to recap, the essence of this series is to um, first of all, this is. This is how I'm running the 10 day transformation program. So each, each day through the 10 days, we're doing different exercises that support different chakras. And we'll also do a cumulative, um, chakra connection process together. Uh, but I wanted to, to walk you all through the process cause it's just so awesome and it just, uh, elicits a thriving experience in your life in different ways. And uh, I just thought it'd be fun to do these processes with you. And I thought you might like it. So, um, you know, just remembering that you are energy, you're an energy being, you're a spirit, you're also physical and everything physical has an energetic blueprint. So what we're doing is we're shifting the energetics so that the physical experience can change. Like when I'm telling you, whenever I have any kind of dysfunction going on, be it in my mind or my body, I know that there's an energetic blueprint underlying the experience and that I need to get that changed. Maybe it's clearing a chakra. Maybe it's looking at my uh, subconscious beliefs and getting some emotional work with someone. Maybe it's uh, working with a shaman and um, doing some clearing work. Maybe it's just really just being, you know, considering what our, our patterns are and changing them. But regardless, everything is energy. And so if energy is the man is the point of is, is what things in the physical experience manifest from, if we can go back and change the energetics, then we can change our experience. Okay. And so each chakra has a lot to offer. And uh, the seven primary that we're going to be working with are run up the central channel of the body. And the first one that we're going to be working with is Muladhara. 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 <laughs> Say that really fast 3,000 times. Okay. So Muladhara is our first chakra and it is, um, it's at the base of the spine. Okay. I, I also, my personally feeling is it's right at my perineum. Like that's where I feel it. So if you do a little Kegel squeeze, ah, there you go. You're, uh, you're, eliciting a response and igniting your first chakra. So if you're feeling um, like you need to, to turn your first chakra on, that's one of the things you can do. But we're going to get into some little exercises here in a minute. Uh, that'll be helpful. Okay. So your first chakra, uh, in each chakra has an element associated with it. And so the element of the first chakra is the earth element. Imagine that it's closest to the earth. It's, it's responsible for what we bring into the physical world, right? Like it's, this is where we birth right through the vaginal opening right there. I mean, that's first chakra, right? Um, yeah. And it represents our core survival needs. So food, sex, safety, shelter, uh, also relates to relationships, um, hydration, diet, exercise, rest. Uh, the adrenals are a part of the first, they relate to the first chakra. So whenever we go into a flight, fight or flight, or we go into overwhelm, then our adrenals are triggered. Like this is all first chakra stuff. Okay. Um, there's also associated body parts to each chakra and the first chakra is associated with your bones. Um, so if you know someone who has osteoporosis or osteopenia, there may be a uh, first chakra deficiency. Uh, first chakra is also related to the legs and the feet. All right. So this is like what's closest to the earth, of course. Um, the base of the spine, the kidneys, 
the body's life force. Um, also teeth and nails, that's kind of like bone, right? Um, just foundational stuff, like the foundational building of cells. It's also related to purging of waste, okay? Um, so being uh, that, you know, the, the <laughs> excrements of our body <laughs> come out from those, er- those parts of our body that are in the first chakra area. So that's really kind of fun, right? So when our first chakra is imbalanced, it can lead to things like being too set in our ways. So if you're like really set in your ways and you're not very flexible, that may be an imbalance in your first chakra. Uh, It can also lead to different addictions. So for me, um, food is an addiction. And I can see if I go into addictive kind of obsessive qualities around food, then I very become very conscious about what's happening in my first chakra because there's addiction. So some people are addicted to things like alcohol and hard drugs and things like that. Um, if you're smoking a lot of pot, I have several patients that I've seen lately and they're like, well, my biggest problem is I smoke a lot of pot. Well, what's that about? So we got to explore that. Yeah, maybe it's, um, it's eliminating some pain or it's helping you sleep. But if you're having to do that all the time, we need to get to the root cause of why you have pain and why you can't sleep. And it's not a lack of marijuana. So um, if you're seeing an over overuse of things like that, um, even an overuse of work or overworking, I should say, uh, over sexing, right? It's too much sex or an obsession with sex. Um, the other things that are kind of related to the first shock chakra is, or um, being sick. So if you're like get sick a lot or you get the flu or something like that, then that's definitely um, a first chakra uh, imbalance. Uh, ac- if you're having accidents, if you're cutting yourself, if you're spending too much money, um, you know, if you're exercising too much, like all these overindulgent, insatiable things are first chakra issues. Okay. The other thing is you can be uh, addicted to certain foods or crave certain foods. And it would be more like milk, fat, meat, all those kind of heavy things. And they're grounding. Now I will tell you, like I go in and out of, um, eating a vegan diet just because it feels good to do that. And, um, but, but I'm definitely a meat eater. I don't have a problem with eating meat. I have to eat meat as a matter of fact, because I've I've done it all. I've been a raw foodist. I've been vegan. I've been vegetarian. And, and it, when it really comes down to it after about month 10 of being on one of those meatless diets, I get sick. And when I eat meat, I don't. Like it's just real for me. So that's my, that's my deal, right? But sometimes I take a break from all of it because it's good to take a break, right? <laughs> but what I notice is if I take a break for so long, like I might do a, 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 a let's say a 10 day cleanse and I'm doing the cleanse and I'm, I'm vegan and, and I just continue being vegan. Well, at some point I may find myself, and this doesn't happen every single time, but I may find myself becoming ungrounded, like getting this real high vibrational frequency going on and not able to bring it down into the physical body. And it makes me a little bit anxious. It makes me like I'll be bouncing around all over the place. And and then when I, as soon as I eat meat, boom, back into my body, back on the earth. I'm able, I'm capable of like making a plan and moving forward with my plan. So it's, it's a real thing, you know, uh, how foods affect our our mental mindset and our energetic body. Um, When we have an imbalance in the first chakra, like I spoke to earlier, we may have osteoporosis or osteoarthritis. Um, We all also may be reactive to fear and anger, sadness, paranoia, things like that, you know, because our, that's all, again, it's all about survival, right? So if we get into the mindset about being fearful about something or angry about something or sad about something, or having paranoia, like these are kind of survival issues a little bit. Uh, The other thing you may notice with an imbalance, it can go the opposite way. So I've spoken to uh, the kind of more anxious side of things, but it can also go the opposite way. It can go into mental lethargy or spaciness where you kind of feel spacey, um, you know, incapable of inner stillness and just like, uh, I can't sit still, I can't meditate, those kinds of things. Again, adrenal (laughs) failure or fatigue here. Um, eating disorders, eating disorders are a big one in my world because I see a lot of women with this. And, uh, this is again, a first chakra deficiency. So, you know, when you're having some of these kinds of issues and and we think about, okay, oh, I've got osteoarthritis, I should take some 
bone medicine is what most people do. They go get some medication for their bones. Don't do that. Okay. Don't do that. Because um, what has been found is that the medications that are being prescribed for osteoporosis, here's what happens. So you have two types of cells in your bones. One type of cell builds the bone up. The other type of cell breaks the bone down. So when cells get old, they need to be disposed of. And your body's really, really good at this. So it builds bone, the cells get old, then it breaks them down, disposes of them. As you get older, the bones don't build as fast as they break down. And then this is what typically, this is, this is typical. Um, and this is what becomes, we call osteoporosis. It's, it's, it's bones that don't have enough tissue built up on the inside because they're not they haven't been building as fast, and so then the body is still breaking it down, and so they're getting depleted. Um, that being said, there's this really great place I've spoken to it a couple of times, but it's called OsteoStrong, and, and these people are turning osteoporosis around. Now, I love giving supplementation to my osteoporotic people because I think it's important to be nourishing the bones as well, so so they'll have what they need to rebuild. And then when you do things like OsteoStrong and you go to work to work out to build stronger bones, your body has the nutrition it needs to actually make that happen. So um, yeah, anyway, that's just the osteoporosis story, and so the rest of the story. <laughs> um, is uh, 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 okay. Yeah. So we're, so we're breaking down bone faster than we're rebuilding it and we get osteoporosis. So when you take the, the medications that they prescribe, what they do is they slow down or um, basically put to sleep those cells that break down bone. So what you have is you have maybe a slower process of building bone, but now with the medication, you can slow down the breakdown of bone. So it doesn't get broke down very fast. So if you look at a bone density scan, you'll actually see greater bone, des- bone density. Now, this sounds great. This sounds really awesome, actually. However, those cells that aren't being broken down are becoming old and brittle. So you begin to get something called brittle bones. And the people who are taking these meds are really not having a great difference in their fracture rate. I mean, it's just true because their bones are brittle. So what you can do is you can take nutrition supplementation that's specific for your body's needs. If you need to know what that is, I can do a micronutrient test with you and figure that out. And then, um, and then go build your bones up with osteo strong and doing some, um, weight training and different things like that. So anyway, um, your bones are part of your first chakra. (laughs) Okay. All right. So when uh, a couple of the things that can happen when your body's getting out of balance, like how, what creates those kinds of balances or are going into like survival crisis type mentality. All right. Now it could be, um, things that, uh, like moving that, that, you, you know, that's uprooting, right? If we think about our first chakra and our root, this is how we root into the ground. This is our earth, earth aspect of ourself, right? And when we move, we pull up that root. So other things that can pull up your root are um, financial problems or changes in your body or your family that can all be uprooting, um, being just in a fearful state, as I spoke to earlier, can be uprooting, right? And it doesn't matter, like your survival crisis mentality is, it could be that, oh, I have the flu, that's kind of survival, and you're in a bit of a crisis. Or it could be like, I just claimed bankruptcy, and that's pretty much a survival crisis as well. So, But your subconscious and the energetics don't really know the difference. (laughs) It really doesn't. It's all survival crisis, right? So any of those kinds of things that are happening in your world could be uprooting you and imbalancing your first chakra, okay? And then often what will happen is we'll do things to mitigate that. So we'll begin to uh, eat meat, eat fat, eat dairy, eat the things that are going to help us to gain weight. Because if we gain weight, we become heavier, we become a little bit more rooted. So <laughs> it's an interesting dynamic when we're working with uh, consciousness around food and eating. The other things we may notice happening is um, when we go into like this survival crisis, first root imbalances, we may begin hoarding because things become really important at that point. Or we may become greedy. You may notice that as an aspect as well. Um, when it's, when your first chakra is balanced, then you'll be demonstrating self mastery. Okay. You'll have a lot of energy, like your physical energy will be high. 
You'll feel grounded. You'll feel healthy. You'll be, you'll feel like you can actually handle life, life's challenges, no matter like what they are. Right. So sometimes we're in a place and we're like, oh yeah, I'm pretty good at handling my challenges. But then that one challenge comes along. We're like, ah, (laughs) blows us out. Right. Then, then that may be, you just could use a little bit more first chakra support. All right. So we're going to do some first chakra support right now. All right. So go ahead and uh, just take a nice deep breath in. And so what, what we've done before in the past, when we put this white belt of light on and we ground, this is, this is turning on our first chakra. It's actually turning on our second too, but we're going to work at it. We're going to work from the perspective of the first. So go ahead and just take a nice deep breath in and close your eyes. If you can, if you're driving, please don't. (laughs) And just allow yourself to become heavy. Just allow yourself to really sink in into the earth, like feeling the earth below your body, feeling your bones get heavy, feeling the femurs move to the back of the thighs. And then um, just allow yourself to become aware of this uh, space in your lower body, uh, right at the perineum. Again, if you want to just give it a nice little gentle squeeze, it doesn't have to be real hard. It's just a little like, hey, waking you up. I'm here. Let's do this. Let's turn ourselves on. Let's create more self-mastery in our life. Let's have good physical relationships and enjoy sex and not be overbearing and too frigid, right? So let's just a little gentle squeezes just to kind of turn that sucker on. There you go. Nice. Right. And take a deep breath. And allow your breath to move down into the perineum. And and if you can't feel it, just imagine it. It doesn't really matter. You don't have to feel it necessarily. Uh, And the more you do this, the more you will start to feel it. So um, you're just allowing the breath to move all the way down into the perineum. Uh, Some people, when they breathe, they're just breathing in the upper chest. And um, probably most of my listeners are pretty... uh, conscious about their breath, I would imagine, because we know as women who are conscious that breath is an important part of facilitating health in our body. So, um, yeah. And if you're, if you're kind of not in tuned with that, that's okay. This is a great practice for you. So just keep breathing down into your perineum. As a matter of fact, if you want to give a little squeeze to your perineum, like boom, like if you're going to do a Kegel, like if you're going to stop your flow of urine gently, And let the breath meet that space in your body. Let the breath meet that area where you're feeling that gentle contraction. (sighs) If you've, um, if you've had like sexual trauma or you've had, um, an education that's strict around sexuality, this may be a really hard, uh, for you to access and that's okay. There's more work we can certainly do, um, one-on-one to help open that up. But it's really, really important because you are a human being and you have these areas of your body that may have been turned off or disconnected from or not loved because it's not okay to be in our yoni. It's not okay to be a woman. It's not okay to have a period. Like that was the story of the ages, right? Like it's dirty. There's something wrong with us. We're sinners, whatever the story is. And I'm telling you that every single part of you is divine. Every single part of you deserves to be honored and loved. And so go ahead and just allow that breath to keep moving right down into that space. And just thinking the thought, I am fully supported. Breathing right down into the pelvic bowl, the floor of that pelvic bowl, right to the bottom. I am fully supported. And I am safe. I am fully supported and I am safe. And just notice how things are starting to change. I'm imagining there's a little bit more openness, a little bit more flexibility, a little bit more give in the pelvic area. Maybe you're even feeling a little turned on. Hey. (laughs) Awesome. And I want you to just imagine a bright red ruby right in the bottom of your pelvic floor. 
And that bright red ruby has a light inside it. And with every inhalation, that light gets bigger and brighter. And just allow that ruby to move around in a circular fashion, in a clockwise fashion, right around, kind of like it's just stirring the pot, scraping the bottom of the bowl. You can go fast, you can go slow, you can barely move. It doesn't matter how you do it. Again, we're just bringing awareness. We're bringing attention to this aspect of ourselves, this physical act, this physical part of our body and the energetics, the subtle energies in that part of the body. The breath helps open that up, move it along, awaken it or reawaken it. And the color enhances the frequency of that space. Awesome. Yeah, so that's just a really easy way to stimulate the first chakra. And you can do that every day. You can do it multiple times a day. It doesn't really matter. But if you're having any of those things that we talked about like a little bit earlier around the food addictions, gaining weight, inability to control your eating, um, not purging, not um, not purging, not um, pooping, <laughs> um, like constipation or even diarrhea could be also for chakra related Um Yeah, if you're having any of that stuff or just feeling spacey or mental lethargy or depression, um, insecurity, you know, those kinds of things, then this would be a wonderful exploration for you. I don't know how it will go. I know how it goes for me and I know how it goes for the people I teach this stuff to, but it would be really, really cool to hear your feedback on it if you actually gave it a moment to really practice with this. Uh, The other things that you can do to stimulate your first chakra is physical activity. So now not too much because over-exercising would be imbalancing to the first chakra, but definitely moving your body. And it seems like I've had a lot of people, I guess, because we're coming off winter, they're just like not moving their body much. So now is the time. Now is the time. Other thing is um, vibrational board. Have you ever done that? Oh my God. It's so good. It's so good. They actually have it at Osteo Strong. I've done it several times in the past. I just forgot about it. And then when I went to Osteo Strong, I was like, oh, a vibration board. And he put me on it twice. Like this was like, oh my gosh, I get ice cream twice before dinner and after dinner. Okay. It was so good. But this vibration board vibrates everything, vibrates all your cells. I don't even, I can't even tell you what it does. I can just tell you that I feel so freaking good when I get off that thing. And it stimulates the first chakra. All right. Um, other, other things, uh, are like with aromatherapy, you could use rosemary and Lang Lang, sandalwood, patchouli, um, doesn't have to be all of those. If you have one of those that works. Um, and then the foods you want to eat are red foods, kind of like the bio fruit I spoke to, spoke to, um, or spoke of, I should say, spoke of in the beginning, um, rainbow chard, beets, cherries, strawberries, cranberries, beans, eggs, tofu, parsnips, you know, those kinds of mostly red foods. I know beans and beans can be red, (laughs) but eggs and tofu aren't necessarily red, (laughs) but they actually support the first chakra. Um, But if you're going to do tofu, there's only one tofu. There's only one. And it's sprouted organic tofu. The person of the brand I use that I know of here is called Wildwood. But if you're doing tofu, don't do tofu unless it's sprouted and organic. Like that's just the way that is. Just don't. Um, But yeah, but the sprouted organic tofu is really nice if you're into it. All right. A a a couple of questions you can also ask yourself. It's like like looking, ask yourself. (laughs) It's like looking a little deeper at your interior. Okay. So these um, these are just great journaling prompts. And, um, basically, uh, you can start with, do you have everything you need to live comfortably? Do you have everything you need to live comfortably? Do you feel supported enough? Do you have looming fears about the end of the world? How resourceful do you feel when meeting life's challenges?
What are your deepest needs and aspirations? Can you trust the possibility of a better life? So those are all kind of first chakra, mental, emotional, mindset kind of stuff. So um, great journaling prompts. I'd highly encourage you to, to write those out and play with them. You may notice that you feel like you have everything to live comfortably in life, and you also may have end of the world fears. That's okay. That's just something to notice about yourself, right? And if you do this work just the simple practice that we did today, <laughs> then does that change anything for you? You know, that would be, that would be a really cool exploration if you're kind of into moving through your, your stuff in this way. Right. Um, okay. I think that gets it for today. I'm going to just leave you with that. And, uh, if you have any questions, reach out. I'm happy to work with you on this stuff. It's just my, I love this stuff. Um, yeah. Anyway. Do whatever it takes to turn your soul on. Thank you for tuning in to Turn Your Soul On Radio. If you're finding yourself living a more inspired life because of this show, help spread the light. Share this episode with every woman you know looking to live their lives a little more on fire. I'd also be grateful if you headed over to iTunes and left a heartfelt review, which really helps the growth of the show. I'd also like to invite you to deepen your connection with our community by joining our private Facebook group, Turn Your Soul On. And if you have any other questions, feel free to shoot us an email at admin at drbrandyvictory.com. Thanks so much for being here today, and I'll talk to you next time. May your soul be turned on. This podcast is for information purposes only. Dr. Brandy Victory is not a medical doctor, and the views and statements expressed on this podcast are not medical advice. This podcast, including Dr. Brandy Victory and the producers, disclaim responsibility from any possible adverse effects from the use of information contained herein. Opinions of guests are their own, and this podcast does not endorse or accept responsibility for statements made by guests. This podcast does not make any representations or warranties about guest qualifications or credibility. This podcast may contain paid endorsements and advertisements for products or services. Individuals on this podcast may have a direct or indirect financial interest in products or services referred to herein. If you think you have a medical problem, consult a licensed physician.